First thing we're going to talk about tonight, the first thing I want to talk about tonight <laughs> is what do you see right when you first when you turn the TV on? Is they're watching Who's the Boss? Who's the Boss? That, that's a very subliminal to the show because who's the boss? That's Negan. This is Daryl's, welcome to Daryl's torture episode. We're really? seeing The Cell, season seven, The Cell. Yeah, we see, we see, uh, it actually starts off with like a day in the day of Dwight. And Dwight's best day is very melancholy of taking numbers down to people and how they mark up their points, stealing from people, <laughs> running people off. Uh, sitting around eating pickle sandwiches and watching who's the boss in his own they little got made. Room. They got it made in, uh, in Negan's <laughs> tavern there. It was like in a big uh, old ran down factory, right? Right. And uh, yeah, they got it made and then you see Dwight going through, picking through everybody. She writes the number 39. He sees these people there. He's like, hmm, 39. He goes over, starts taking mustard out of there, shit, finds some pickles, mm -hmm. this and that. And then uh, Gets moving on to torturing old Daryl, feeding him shit sandwiches, yeah, little dog food on them sandwiches and bread. We started we started hearing uh, we the song Easy Street all all throughout the episode, right? Basically, they're doing this torture, which is basically playing the same song, making him go crazy in his cell, and Daryl's just sitting That's there. What they do to tallywackers? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so he's be basically in his cell naked, just dirty, and they're playing the song to him and just throwing food at him, basically, just like you would a dog, yeah. trying to break him of of, of his spirit, really. Yeah. Like you break a horse, or after a couple times, kind of throws him some clothes and says, "You better just do what he says," and he takes him out to meet Negan and trying to break him, see if he's uh, says that he's Negan yet. He doesn't kneel, so they push him down, and then uh, and then he finds after they uh, abuse him so much, he finds a way. to pick his way out the door, he comes out there, and this is one of the second points, uh, Megan's new wife and Dwight's ex-wife notices who Daryl is and remembers when they stole his bike, she's feeling bad, she sees him escape, and she's like, you better just get back in your cell, shit can get a lot worse, no matter what you've done, right. shit can get worse. Last season we see um, Daryl, so basically the, these, these people, it was a woman, a man, and a, a younger woman actually, uh, they confront Daryl, he tries to kind of help them, they take his stuff and run away. He meets them later on and helps them from these people that are chasing him, which you find out later are Negan's men. And um, his face was iron. Yeah, and then, <laughs> then the, 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 the young girl dies, and the two, the couple will take their old stuff again and leave again with this stuff. And so basically, this is D Dwight's wife telling him how sorry he feels that we took all your stuff and left you for dead. And even though they left, Daryl was like, Yeah, you're sorry. She goes, We're sorry. He goes, Yeah, you're going to be. And literally, you know, it was basically a, a foretelling what's going to happen. Says, Remember when you said that? I am. She is, <laughs> yeah. and she and she's a super hot wife. Yeah. So we we get into more about um, how Negan really controls these people and how everyone's Negan and how everyone they live like kings here. They live like kings in the apocalypse, but he wants everything from you. You know, Negan's he wants the Sherry's berries. He wants yeah. he wants your manhood. He wants everything that you earn, and he wants a part of it. And wants you to call him God, and wants you to walk around calling yourself his name. Got to work for your point star and shit. Yeah, and at one point, Daryl tries to walk away, and it was his test. Um, he, he made it to the cells, and he, he broke out checking on a bike, and they all confronted him. And even even Negan tried to swing a bat at him, and Dale didn't even flinch. He goes, "Man, you are you are strong. You don't scare easy, and I like that." He wants him bad. And that was and that was basically his chance to basically stay in the cell and say, "Yeah, I want, I want to be part of this." But you know, Daryl's not to be broken. He's a wild horse, and he ain't gonna be broken. Now we see Dwight take off next. He takes off and. I don't really know what he's doing, if he's scrounging for shit or whatever, but he sees a bunch of zombies killed and then he sees he sees his buddy uh His tire pop. He's walking around with his tire pop. That's why he's walking his bike. The rim was all bent. Yeah. From, uh, yeah, okay. So mm. yeah, maybe his tire pop and then it bent the rim and mm. this and that. And then he sees his buddy, what was his name, Bob? Bob. He sees Bob, whatever, and, and he's like, Stop, stop. He's like, Oh, you ran away, now you fucked up. Uh, now you gotta go back and you owe even more and he's like you know what this is the last time I'm gonna kneel let's go ahead and shoot me in the head and uh, he says uh, he says no we'll dig up your dead wife I'll feed, him to, feed it to the crows everybody you've ever talked to we'll put them on the fence yeah, and then he says Dwight's talking to Bob and Bob's saying all the things that Dwight already knows in his head. He's like, it's already done. There's nothing for me back there. He's almost, he's just going to kill me anyways. Why do I go back? Talking about the deal Dwight got with his wife. Yeah. So, uh, he's ironed your face, took yeah. your wife, dude. Like, what's the deal? So every time Dwight asks him a question to move, the response he's getting is exactly how Dwight feels. Dwight feels dead inside. And he's going to take everything from this man, and he still does whatever he says. So Dwight he shows up with a bat. We're all scared of him. Do what the fuck, and everything belongs to him now. Mm -hmm. Bob turns around and he says, all right, you win. And he starts walking back and you just see Dwight point his gun and shoot. Yeah. And I, I thought he just took him out and did him a favor. Mm -hmm. Didn't do him a favor at all. Yep. See that fucker, the poor fucker on the wall mm -hmm. after a while. And then Dwight's looking at him. He's like, 
you know, it's, it's got to be eating him up inside a little bit. Because oh, yeah. you know? that could be right. him, and he feels the exact same way he does. <laughs> and Negan even actually, even actually offers Daryl three doors, just like just like the just like the um the let's no, make a deal. Door. He goes door number one. He goes, oh, you can be on a pike and be a zombie for me you on the fence. On a stick, on a spear, number, be on the fence. Number two, we can work for a point system, which you're gonna hate. It is a hell of a life. Blind or three, balls eating shit sandwiches. <laughs> or three, or door number three, live like a king. And Daryl doesn't want any door. He's like, yo, he just takes a swing at one of his men, and they get a big old fight, and then Negan walks away like, okay. I'm thinking wrong. that Dwight is kind of looking up to Daryl because, one, he's wearing his vest. Two, he uh, took his bike. Yeah. And then three, he carries around his crossbow. Yeah. And so he's trying to find a different identity from his past life where his wife got stolen and getting fucked by the boss. See, I kind of think that Dwight has a lot of respect for Daryl, and I think that Dwight's actually, um, Dwight's actually um, taking care of his stuff for him. And I think he gets one of his crossbow close and his best close because if he doesn't, someone else will take it. I think Dwight's keeping that stuff because he wants to work a deal with Daryl. I think, I think, I think that's a good prediction. That's going to happen. Uh, good prediction. A little group of three is going to take it over. And uh, like Negan is kind of like, he kind of loved to hate him at first, but now he's just a straight up bully. He like did that flinching shit and Daryl didn't flinch, man. I was like, ah, motherfucker. <laughs> you can see this one part about towards the very end. Um, Daryl's on the floor and he's just, he's breaking down crying. Dwight gave him a, a picture of Glenn that was bashed in and said, this is because of you. Because you hit Negan, this is what happened. And he played a new song for him. And the new song was about crying. It was an old song. But I was also wondering if, you know, during this time, he's playing a new song gave Daryl a little bit more hope. You know, that maybe Dwight isn't the bad man. shaking his first and he's like, wait a minute. And then it was like a sad song and he's looking at Glenn's head bashed in. You know, who wouldn't cry? It was almost like, it was almost like, a, like you, you got a friend kind of, but not, I'm just friendly. You know what I mean? It was, it was very... going to fuck you for now and maybe join up with you later. Absolutely. Yeah. So, that's our review. Let's right get to on. the whiskey. All right. Tonight's bottle of reviewing, Uncle Bob's root beer flavored whiskey. <laughs> this shit's pretty damn good for a $17 bottle. Got it safe for you. And I uh, was a little skeptical at first, but then uh, I poured mine over ice. Trav's having it straight up. And I mean, damn, it, it tastes like we were talking about. It tastes like I already mixed drink. I've never drank it before, so I don't know where I would drink it, but what do you think about it? <laughs> this is absolutely Uncle Touchy's Night Night Juice. You, know, <laughs> you, you drink this whiskey right now in a couple hours, you'll know what happened to you. You'll know where your pants are down. You'll know why Uncle Touchy's in the house. It's just, it gets crazy. Guaranteed you drank this whole bottle. I mean, you'd have one hell of a sugar hangover more than oh. anything. Maybe a stomach ache. I mean, it's really fucking good, though. So it, that, it, it seems like that it, good's going to fuck you. It tastes like it's already mixed. Like I like drinking whiskey with like like a, like a, a low polo whiskey with uh, cream soda or root beer. It tastes like it's already to go. Yeah. You know, when you go into a concert or something, you don't do the whole mixing bullshit at a, at a concert. You're ready to go. Yeah, 30, 35% alcohol. So, I mean, but I'm feeling a little buzz off of it. Yeah, yeah, man. A couple of shots already. My foot kind of tang. Plus, it's sweet. So, you don't have to worry about your, your throat getting all dry or anything. So, yeah, I yeah. like it. Uncle Touchy, Uncle where'd Touchy. it go? <laughs> Uncle Bob. Uncle <laughs> Bob.